Hi, it's time for Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I am your certified sex therapist, Lori Watson, and author of Wanting Sex Again. And I'm here with marriage family therapist, Tony Del Medico. You can check us out on the web at foreplayrst.com, and you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Lori, where is Foreplay going to lead us today? Oh, Foreplay is going to lead us to orgasm. <laughs> orgasm. Orgasm the for The big who? O's. The big O's. Yeah, for women. Orgasms for her. That's right. That's wow. right. You know, I, I look forward to this episode with so much anticipation. <laughs> um, you know, in the middle of <laughs> what life. What you're going to learn. In the middle of life, I must confess that throughout the ages, with the guys that I've visited with, both personally and professionally, I don't think that we know a whole lot about the mysterious female orgasm. Mm -hmm. we, we get uh, radar echoes coming from outer space and we bring them to the table and say, well, did you hear that a woman could have this kind of orgasm or that kind of orgasm? And there's the mysterious G spot. And so, you know, we're, I think we're always piecing these things together. And, and I think we know far less men do in general, know far less about the workings of the female body um, than we care to admit. Yeah. And I think that. I think that that's true <laughs> with most of the men I sit with, unfortunately. Oh, I thought it was just me. <laughs> no, I <laughs> me think and that my, all, Me and right? my merry band of knuckleheads. Right. I think the big myth is that women climax with intercourse. Uh, you know, men come in and they're so wow. anxious about providing long intercourse for their partner and thinking that that's what gets her there. So you're saying that women don't have orgasms by having intercourse? Most women don't. So wow. it's, it's only 15 to 20 percent of all women can reach an orgasm through sexual intercourse. I sure wish somebody would have told me that yeah. a long, long time ago. Yeah. I, and I think, you know, sometimes men come in and say, you know, uh, you know, my my wife needs clitoral stimulation and all the other women I was with never needed that. They were all climaxing just with sexual intercourse. And I'm thinking, OK, you you know, you were with a slew of fakers <laughs> because really most women, they don't reach orgasm that way. And I'm I'm thinking about the, the poor guys that that I've gone through life with. Like we didn't sit around and talk about how, and we certainly didn't get it in our sex talks, right? And, and how, so, how to how to help a woman or how to be a part of a woman's orgasm. Yes, there were no conversations. There was the yes. traditional birds and the bees thing about how babies are made, but there was no conversation about pleasure. Right, and there is hardly any sexual education about that. I mean, I think if men are watching porn to understand. What sex is. I mean, that that's just not sex. That is not partnered sex. I mean, it's something else. And I understand it could be very exciting for some people, but but it is not really what happens in partnered sex. So that is still not the instruction manual either. No. So where no. are guys going to get this information about how to have how to help a woman? And I'm, I'm curious to know if women know how to give themselves an right. orgasm. So, I mean, some women don't. I mean, some women have never had an orgasm. Uh, most women learn how to have orgasms through va masturbation. Okay. I mean, just like a guy would learn. I mean, about 75% of all women learn it that way. Is that a very natural, like most men find their penises around 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, and then sort of nature takes its own course. Is it the same for a woman? Yes. Most, most girls do masturbate. Actually, all babies do masturbate. But oftentimes I think parents get really anxious about that. So there's more prohibition against girls masturbating than there is against boys. Um, so, you know, it, it's, that's why it might be, it's lower for women because 99% of all boys learn how to have sex by themselves first, how to have an orgasm first that way. It might be 99.9. .9. I'm not sure if the, the right. data is on that. Right. <laughs> Somehow um, we all seem to figure it out one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, I mean, some women learn first in a partnership, but I think – so many men don't know that. I think they think that intercourse is kind of like hand in glove. I think men think that women are feeling on the inside of their vagina what he's feeling on the outside of his penis. And you're saying that she doesn't? No. Wow. I mean, not at all. Wow. I mean, the, the vagina is kind of like this uh, visceral pressure. So it feels not quite as distinct. I mean... Where she feels the most sensation is at the entrance of her vagina, um, but it's really deep inside. It's more like a stretch feeling than it is the same sort of tactile feeling that he's feeling with his penis. Wow. Yeah. No, it's the clitoris. Amazing. The I'm, clitoris I'm sitting is here analogous. stunned. Like I, I had no idea. And I, I'm, 
And I'm Tell sure me. that, and I'm sure that I know, right? <laughs> and we're doing a podcast on sex therapy, so I'm learning as we go. Obviously, yeah. Uh, but and you it's, a, and it's that... a good conversation because I don't think any of the women I've been with, uh, and and I hope I'm not disclosing too much that that we would actually sit down as partners and have these intimate conversations around how things work, how things work for you, how they work for me. So I, I think it's wonderful to have this conversation. So you in thought. General. That it was, that she did feel on the inside what you felt on the outside. Yeah, and I thought just uh, if I could just hang in there and continue to do more and faster and longer that somehow things would take care of themselves. Right. Okay. No, so the woman's clitoris is analogous to the male penis. Ah, So think about, you know, if if a man were having sex and, and his penis was never touched or stroked and somehow or another he was to reach orgasm. I mean, that's what it's like for a woman. It would be, yeah, be a bit of a s- small miracle yeah, or, or mean, by willy-nilly that that would happen. Right. So you're, right. you're that really— Right. That is a miracle. So you really want our men listeners or anybody listening who wants to go to the female orgasm to really focus on— The clitoris. I yeah. mean, the clitoris is the center of her sexual universe. That's where it's at for her. And I think that so many men don't see that. They don't realize that. And they give it short shift. I mean, yeah. I, I ask on my paperwork for women, you know, do you have orgasms? And when the answer is no, I look further down in the paperwork and it says, how, how long does he stimulate your clitoris? You know, five minutes. Well, that's not enough. That's not enough for a woman to reach orgasm. So how long does it take then? Okay. Inquiring ra- minds. Brace yourself. Do, the, male, the, <laughs> the male masses do want to know, yeah. how long does this take? Okay. Brace yourself. All right. Because it takes women a long time. It takes them about 45 like, minutes of stimulation to reach orgasm. So the first- So you have to, you have to touch it for 45 minutes? Uh, okay, Is that what you're no, saying? No, 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 no. And you don't want to start touching it right in the beginning, actually. Because if you go for the genitals right in the beginning- She's going to feel – it's often painful, invasive. It can feel dry, sandy. Or some women talk about it as, you know, about as sexy as touching her elbow. I mean, in the beginning is not the time for genital stimulation, but it is the time for general arousal. So a man needs to do quite a bit of general whole body holding, kissing, making out, sort of gradually focusing more toward breasts and genitals – which I know it's so, it so for like you a long guys time. listening out there, spend a lot of time hanging around first base, second base, take your time, a lot of heavy petting, mm-hmm. stroking, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And then it takes most women 20 minutes of direct, continual stimulation, clitorally to reach an orgasm. But you're saying even before that, it, it is uh, most I'm thinking about most guys having this fixer mentality like, okay, I know what to do now, so. I'm, I'm going, gonna go I'm going do straight it. straight there and right. what you're saying straight is straight for the button. Yeah. And if it, if you jump and it doesn't feel good, it, it's not the organ itself is not ready. That's you're right. Saying. That's so right. The, the sensation changes. That's yes. not true typically for the male penis. That's absolutely right? not so true. So we still don't have a conception for you know, just because you're touching it doesn't mean that it's ready to be touched. That's right. That yeah. I I like the way you yeah. say that. That is absolutely true. And I wow. I think that for women um, when they do want it touched, I mean, there's often very specific techniques that each woman wants, and it's it can be different from woman to woman. And not only that, the same woman, it can be different from time of day, the amount of salt she had in the diet. Um, time of the month? Time of the month, absolutely. Hmm. She wow. really changes in terms of how she likes to be stimulated. and so, so as a guy trying to figure, unravel the mystery of all of this, how would you even know? Like, Oh, please, please, I want women to tell him. You know, I really want her to tell him. And I, and I hope that men do not feel criticized because I really don't think it's their fault if they're not doing it right in the moment. I mean, a, a guy, a good lover should have like 20 different strokes in his you know, in his backpack, right? I mean, those are gotcha. those are the things that he yeah. should be able to know. These have worked. These these strokes have worked in the past, and he should be able to pull them out. But he can't well, know what's going to work that night or that moment. Right. Well, and stay tuned with Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy because we'll be doing a podcast on those 20 strokes, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> okay. We'll put that near the top okay. of the list. We want every guy <laughs> armed with a full toolbox <laughs> yes. full of things that he can do. We just don't right. want to hand him a hammer and a screwdriver. Yeah. It's, uh, it sounds like he's really needing the full arsenal um, and, and to not be um, offended when she when she has the courage to say, oh, that's too much or not enough pressure or a little more here or there. 
that he should be open to that and very trainable and coachable versus offended somehow that that he's not a good lover, right? Or that he knows what she needs. And, I mean, and I, you're I, saying I hear that, that. and I you're hear that. and you're saying the definition of a good lover is to be open to that, open and to, to the be moment. attuned. I, I mean, I think that a woman needs a lover who is tuned in to her, you know, how she moans, how she sighs, how she expresses herself, how she moves. You know, that's some of what he needs to pick up on to know if her, if she's feeling pleasure or not. And I and I know. That some men are do not feel criticized, and they are begging their wives, please tell me what feels good. I would love to know. And and I say to her, you know, you have to tell him. But I, I think that there is something in people's minds that it's more romantic if you don't talk about it. And I think women are socially trained. Right. I, I'm Some, not supposed somehow, to know. Yeah, somehow the myth is it's just supposed to all happen quite naturally without any – just like it does on TV, right? It, or exactly. On the movies, exactly. Yeah. It's on TV, basically, she's up against a rough tree. Nobody touches her clitoris. Right. They have intercourse and she climaxes. And they all in, orgasm together. Yeah, right? all together. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's a 10-second clip. And, and that blows. is a total lie. Yeah. Right. So, well, let's, let's come let's, back to some of this. That sounds great. I'm loving this first half, Lori, and, and can't wait to hear the mystery be unraveled in the second half. So okay. thanks for tuning in for Play Radio Sex Therapy. We'll, we'll be, be right back. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible Welcome back to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm Tony Del Medico, marriage and family therapist, and I'm here with author and sex therapist Lori Watson, and we've got a great episode going today. Lori, we were talking about the female orgasm, and I just couldn't be happier to be doing this today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, New if, information. If, if nothing else, I'm trainable. Yeah. So, And I think a lot of guys <laughs> out there are. And some of us, particularly if you marry young, uh, you may not have access to all of this information and, right. and back before the Internet and everything else. So it's a bit of the blind leading the blind when we marry young. Um, so. And I think that some people think that it's like riding a bicycle, that you should just do it. They don't really think about researching it or reading a book or looking it up. And so then they don't know. And maybe they've seen porn or they've seen the movies and they think that that's how it's done. And that is just false information. Yeah. And the, the information we were talking about or that you were given in the first half was fabulous. And, and I think I cut you short a little bit. You were talking about um, the female orgasm cycle taking about 45 minutes. And I raised my eyebrows going, oh, that's a lot of work. Right. And you said, wait, wait, there's a there's a 2020 rule. So I'm wondering if we could go back to that and you can spend a few minutes really breaking that down, particularly for the male listeners okay, out there. Okay, so it is broken in 20 minutes. So. 20 minutes, basically, of more general arousal, and then 20 minutes of clitoral arousal stimulation that brings her to orgasm. So the general, the first 20, the general arousal is more the first base, second base, just sort of getting in the mood of things. Yeah. I mean, women just don't like to be grabbed directly in the beginning. Right. I mean, I think so many men go Do for it. Do the bump it. and cup thing that right. you mentioned in the past. Right. They come yeah. up in the kitchen and they grab her genitals or they grab her breasts and and she's not ready for it. And I, I think that it, there is a physiological reason for that. I mean, women's genitals don't feel good to be touched until she's already somewhat aroused. So in that arousal, are you talking about until there's some blood flow? There's some actual physiological arousal. It doesn't feel good to be touched. Okay. Yeah. And so she has to get there. And some of that is getting in the mood. Some of okay. it is this general holding that helps her kind of warm up to the whole thing. 
So, fellas, if you're listening, you've got to take some time on the front end and slow way down. Because I, I think as in a man's arousal cycle, we get there very quick. The horses are out of the gate. And we're already 10 miles down the road. Right. So I mean, somehow we've got to slow way down in our heads. Yes. I mean, a man having an erection, he has completed the arousal cycle. He is ready for intercourse and for orgasm. And, and for women, I, I got to say, you know, they are foreplay is the whole thing. I mean, foreplay is where most women have orgasms. So foreplay is sex for women. And I don't the think touching we can, and stimulation. That's what they like. That's what they need. And I don't think we can stress that enough. That's right. I mean, foreplay it, is the sex. It is not about intercourse most of the time for women. They may love it. They may feel close. And there's that small percentage of women that can also climax that way. But even them, Tony, I mean, much of it is they have concurrent clitoral stimulation at the same time they're having intercourse. Okay. Either he's touching her or she's using a vibrator or something so that then she has an orgasm. Gotcha. Which, which speaking of vibrators, I would say that a vibrator is a good tool that can shorten either 20 minute phase, you know, so maybe it gets her going faster or she uses it after she's already aroused somewhat to bring her quickly to orgasm. And it, it is a good way for young, busy couples to, you know, bridge that, time gap okay. and and more quickly match each other. But I would say the number one reason women sort of give up on their own orgasm is they think they're taking too long. You know, this 45 minutes, ah, you know, they, they feel exhausted. I don't have time. I don't have 45 minutes to have an orgasm. I don't even want to take 45 minutes or, but what they really mean, I think is that they're comparing themselves to the male pattern of how quickly he can have an orgasm. And they're saying, I'm deficient. I'm I'm defective. I take too long. And and I think no, she, you know, she's comparing herself to a man. Yes, she takes long compared to him, but right. she doesn't take long compared to other women. Right. So she's right where she needs to be. And That's so right. she needs to take some pressure off of herself as well. Spend some time talking about the second 20 minutes here, okay. this 2020 rule. So Okay. So so during the stimulation, a lot of women, I mean, first of all, he should use sort of real concentrated touches. I think sometimes women complain to me, you know, he's all over the map. It's the way, um, the difference between your husband giving you a back rub, you know, kind of scratches your back a little bit and pats you and says, there you go, honey. And the way a masseuse gives a back rub, which is specific techniques, it's symmetrical. If the masseuse touches one side of the back, they touch the other side of the back. They take some time with every touch. So it isn't just this jumble of things, it's like they really take a specific touch to make you relax and to to make your muscles relax. And it's the same thing during the second phase of the 2020 solution is that a husband or a, a male partner should really know, you know, what he's doing. And how does he know that? I mean, best case scenario, she's told him. You know, sometimes women come in and they say, no, my husband, he, he really knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes I ask, okay, how did you learn that? Lots of practice, lots of correction, and, lots and of I'll, conversation. I, yeah, he had either an earlier lover or his wife sit him down, show him. I mean, I think this is the best gift a woman can give a male partner mm-hmm. who's open is show him what you like. I mean, actually explicitly lights on demonstrate what it looks like. And, and I think women are so shy. I mean, sure. th- this is like you know, a a stage four kind of intervention in sex therapy because so many couples are not ready for that. She's not ready for that. You know, she feels very anxious about A, that she does masturbate, B, that she's about to show him this. I mean, it's just like that is such a vulnerable exercise, but it is the best gift. Well, and it also takes courage for him to make the ask. Just throwing up his hands and saying, hey, I I don't know. I really don't know where I am. And I want to please you. And can you just take some time and show me? Yeah, and how I this think that works? when he's doing this, he needs to look at least with candlelight, if not bright light, because a woman's vulva looks different as it becomes aroused and feels different. I mean, okay. in the dark, if a man reaches down to touch her, he's looking for some structure that, you know, that he should be familiar with. And really, in the dark, the most firm structure in a woman's vulva is her urethra. Okay. Not her clitoris. And so he can be stimulating the wrong thing. And and a lot of men, you know, they want to touch and stimulate the vagina with their fingers. 
thinking that that's really going to get her going. That's the big place, you know, is do that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, you know, you're totally in the wrong place. You're paying attention to the wrong thing. Pay attention to the clitoris. And he doesn't even know where he is because he can't feel it. Right. You know, if she's unaroused, around, right, yeah. if he's un- if she's unaroused, not him. If she's unaroused, her clitoral structure kind of feels like the labia, it just feels like everything. And that's why watching a woman go from unaroused state to a more aroused state, he kind of gets a picture of what it should also feel like. I mean, coordinating hand and eye in that point is the best way to learn technique. Oh, it's fabulous, Lori. I'm I'm aware of the time in the podcast, and I'm wondering about uh, guys talk about the G spot every now and then, and that pops up. So and I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about um, other things that keep women from having orgasms. So, um, do you want to talk about the G spot today? Okay, or? yeah, the G spot. I mean, is about two and does a half it, inches. Does it exist? It exists. Thank it you. definitely exists. Is there proof? Okay, of life okay, on so Mars. If a woman is lying on her back. It's about uh, not quite a male finger inside on the roof of her vagina. And it's a very sensitive spot. Oftentimes women who have orgasms in intercourse, basically they've got themselves at an angle that there's more G-spot stimulation because it's one of the most sensitive places inside the vagina. Okay. And G-spot stimulation combined with clitoral stimulation is often a really good combination that gets her there. Uh, That's helpful to know. Um, so, so hold on. So hold okay, on. So okay. Is, uh, okay. So I'm getting going. would you actually feel it, or does it? Is it just? You a mean space? if you were a man? Okay. Yeah, if you were a man, and is there pressure? Is there no pressure you put on it? Okay. What so do you do? some men say that they feel a slight um, bump. I mean, very, very slight, kind of firmer, t- firmer tissue. Okay. When they stimulate her G spot, most men say they can't feel anything. Okay. And most women, let's say he's touching her. And she suddenly feels the urge to urinate. That is actually the right spot, but the wrong time. So okay. it, it says that she's lower on the mountain of arousal. She's not yet aroused enough for it to translate in her body and in her mind to sexual pleasure. So if you're touching her and she says, oh, that makes me need, need to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've got it, Just but you want to do it off. later. Okay, um, And that can help. And also sexual intercourse positions that stimulate that can be good. But yeah. you asked me another question. Yeah, the other one was, you know, what else stops a woman from having an orgasm if, if that's a goal for the couple? And I'm saying right. you're saying it should be for every couple. Right. Yeah. So the number one thing I think that stops her is self-consciousness about how long she's taking. Okay. So I, I definitely think that that's, she's watching herself. And when she's watching herself, she's kind of hovering over the bed like, oh, it's not my night. And if a guy, you know, expresses any frustration or with this and hurries her, she's going to say, forget it. Let's just move to intercourse. It's not my night. Let's go on. Um, I think that women also have a physiological issue that they kind of stair step up the way to orgasm. So many times they reach a plateau. And when you're on a plateau, suddenly you're not becoming more aroused. You're just in a standstill. And so women experience that as a numbness. But that's actually very natural in changing the stimulation, maybe moving from oral sex to manual stimulation or manual stimulation to a vibrator. But she's yeah. actually close gotcha. when she's on a plateau, and right. it, she can move all the way up the mountain. Well, and, and now you're giving us wonderful tools to put in this toolbox of the 20 strokes. So right. if things are plateauing right. out, it's time to shift gears and, and do something else, sort of stay where you're at, but change the angles, change the motion, change the sensations. Lori, this has been a fabulous 24 minutes. Do you have a tip? Yes, I I think the tip is that a man should say to a woman, take your time, girl. Slow down, you move too fast. That's right. Yeah, I think that was my tip as well. So, And and concentrate on the G-spot and, and, uh, excuse me, the... The, the clitoris, clitoris. The clitoris. <laughs> I know. Perfect. <laughs> After 20, I clitoris. still can't get it right. right? <laughs> That's okay. fabulous. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on 4Play Radio Sex Therapy. I've been with Lori Watson, author and sex therapist, and I'm Tony Del Medico, marriage and family therapist. We will see you next time for some more 4Play. Hey, help us stay on top here at 4Play. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.